Hey everybody, it's Katie back for another episode of Girl on Fire. And with me today, I have a special guest and I'm going to get her name right because she just told me, Melissa Therese. Did I get it right? Yeah, excellent, <laughs> excellent. So uh, I am entitling this episode, um, Jerking Off with Miss Middleton. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I really love that. Given the first sex scene in, in the book. So <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers though. So, uh, but today uh, we're going kind of against the grain of what I usually do. Instead of a, are you eating my hair? I'm sorry, my cat's trying to eat my hair. Um, instead of uh, the customary hot sauce, we're going to do <clears throat> a jerk seasoning and Melissa's going to do mild because she's a wuss, mm -hmm. although I thought it would be entertaining to see her cry. You know, she doesn't want to do that. So I decided to accommodate her, you know, so I wouldn't scare her away from appearing on the show. So she's going to do the mild version of a jerk seasoning. Uh, we both have different brands. Um, or I'm going to do a hot and spicy version if everybody can see of a jerk seasoning. And this is authentic jerk seasoning. It's not any of that smooth shit with fruits and all that stuff, you know, that you get. Like, uh, like I said, the bastardized version of it, you know, it's none of that. It's the authentic stuff that you can use to grill, to marinate, or to like, what do they use? Like sticks to push the seasoning into the meat and stuff like that. So it's a thick enough paste to where you will be able to do that. So um, we were going to do food. We were going to marinate our own food and do that. But because it's 1030 here in Louisiana, uh, it's a little early for me to eat lunch. And I'm not going to eat salmon for breakfast. It's just not going to work for me. I mean, you know, so and she unfortunately didn't have time to marinate her chicken so we are going to spoon it and see how that's going to work out so all right so if she cries i'll try not to make too much fun i'll try i do my best but she has a mild version so it should not be bad um so I, i'm not i'm thinking she probably won't have any heat at all so all right, I got the hot and spicy with actual scotch bonnet, scotch bonnet. So we're gonna try it. I got my I got my spoon, and since it's jerk seasoning, I am going to just get a little tiff of it because it's a nice thick paste, and I don't want to kill myself. So see, I got a oh, that's even too much. I got a, a little. See, she's she's probably got a little more than me. So okay, all right. Bottom of that. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot. This doesn't. It's got some heat off the front end. It's got more salt than I'm used to. Mm. A lot of salt. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised at that. Hmm. Man's got a lot of heat. Does it? Mm. Are you gonna cry? No, no. Gonna cry? <laughs> I might cough. Okay, well, it's a good thing you have a drink with you. It's it's good tasting. It's a little salty, but it's got a good complex taste to it. Oh wow! Do you need to go Ooh. get some milk? You have milk in your coffee. I've got water. Oh, okay. I hope that helps. So. All right. All right. Look, she had to move her glasses and everything, guys. What were your glasses <laughs> fogging up? <laughs> I'm not bothered at all, everybody. It was it was spicy, but you know, I'm used to spicy stuff. So that was on a the low end for me. I would give that probably maybe a five for heat. You know, maybe is this, is this out of what's this out of ten or yeah, out of ten. Ten being the highest and the hottest. I'm going to according to your taste. Oh, according to your taste, is it really? Yeah. Mm. I really have to try. Yeah, I don't remember the mild being. Maybe that, because we eat it, we're eating it like right after the jar, though. That could make a difference in the world. You know? Yeah. 
It's just got really warm in here. Yeah, that's not good with coffee, everybody. Don't don't do that. Oh, oh, but it was, it was good. I'm, I'm gonna definitely. I just want to do salmon. Mine was really really salty. It it is. It has like. Oh wow, 540 milligrams per two tea, per two teaspoon. That's a lot of salt. And it's not even the first uh, ingredient. Mine has mine has like four or five five ingredients before the salt. I have no idea what my I don't know. Hmm. But would you would you use that on your chicken if you decided to do chicken? Very very sparingly. Yeah, yeah. Because I imagine the the longer you marinate it, the more the spice will get in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I'm gonna have to try it again. Maybe I just gotta because I didn't think that one was hot at all when I first used it. But then it's it's just me, everybody. I've had Reaper sauce and and all that stuff so maybe it's just me at this point my wife tells me that I've completely burned out my taste buds because when I cook for her you know I'm just woo, 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 you know I'll put the spice and stuff in there and if it gives me a little zing I'm like okay it won't bother her but what's a zing for me is like oh my god you make this too hot for her so I have to really watch it I have to really watch it because I've gotten so used to cooking that way so all right Let's get start. Are, are you ready to start? Do you need some more time to calm down? I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's get started. You have a new book out, Miss Middleton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Confession time. I did. I've read over half of it. I didn't finish it yet. I do intend to finish it. And it's not a, a reflection on you at all. It's a reflection on me and me being busy. And I haven't read anything like for forever. It's just, it's hard to get it back into that swing of things sometimes. So, but what I've read, I, I've really enjoyed. I really enjoyed. It was, uh, it was kind of like, to me, uh, it was like, like a slow build from the beginning. And then it just kind of took off. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that was, I didn't expect that. Okay, okay. So, but it was the first book I've read by you, okay? And the tone is distinctively British, but I like that, you know. Have you ever tried to Americanize anything you've written before? Um, my first four, three, three, mm -hmm. four, three books mm -hmm. were set in America. Oh, okay. Okay. So that that sort of came about because I originally wrote fan fiction. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh my God, seriously? Yeah, um, for Cal's, Cal's owner. Um, and then it turned into Analyzer, which wasn't really a thing because nobody liked one of the characters. Um, but that sort of, that was when I started writing. Mm -hmm. I think it was, was, was American. Um, and then... I released Forget Me Not, which is actually based in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And I sort of realized, okay, this is this is where I feel comfortable. Okay. So I've not written anything based in Amer in America since, but that's may maybe down the line I might, you know, sort of go that way again. But because I've not visited, mm -hmm. I've got nothing to base it on. So I mean, you know, you can you can make sure you get the words right and things, but you, you kind of need a place, yeah. you know, something, yeah. something to focus on. So for me, at the moment, I probably won't write anything based in America. Okay. But I would like to at some point because I would like to visit the US. So, Have you ever been? No. Really? Yeah. Okay. So how did you get like... Uh, the colloquialisms and, and everything down? I mean, did you do some research or did you did watch TV? How, how did you, I mean, because what the like British slang is so much different from American slang. So what did you do in, in those books that you did write from a, a kind of an American point of view? What did you do to, uh, to help you along with that? 
it, it, it probably would be mostly watching TV shows because okay. in the UK, all we watch is American shows. You know, every, really? every time, well, yeah, yeah. But I'm not really much of a fan of like British crime dramas, anything like that. I don't mind some of them, but a lot mm -hmm. of them. I beg to differ because as an American, I've always said the British are so much better than us and they just have better TV. Oh, okay. I, I do. And some of my favorite shows have been from British television. I mean, you know, so it's just like, oh my God, it's like, you know, I compare um, some of the the crap I watch, you know, Supergirl and blah, blah, blah. Oh, so Supergirl. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, that's universal, but, you know, yeah. to, uh, to some of the other stuff, you know, like uh, Prime Suspect and things mm. like that. And it's just like, whoa, it's just something deeper. I don't know. Maybe it's the actors. I, I don't know what it is, but it just seems like it's always better than what I've seen over here. But then again, maybe I'm just not watching the right American show. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And I've got a few friends in America and they all watch British shows. So, you know, um, maybe it's just we do the opposite because it, it's something different, isn't it? So maybe. different for you. Maybe. For me. Okay. Okay. okay, that's interesting. So but, yeah. how would you describe your writing style? I asked my alpha reader before and they described it as romanced. Oh, that's it's interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very angsty. Everything, okay. everything is angsty. And I don't know why, because I don't generally have any angst going on do you so think, may, may, maybe i'm making up for it i, I, I don't know well god i hope not so how well, when you first start reading let's say uh when you first started reading romance mm -hmm. was there a, the the first few books you read was there a lot of angst in it probably because i always seek it out it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's the, it's a lot of times it's the formula, I think mm. the romance formula, um, you know, or it has been for a long time. When I first started reading romance back in the day, when I was like 12 or 13, I used to read my mom's Harlequin romances and the men were so mean and the women were always crying. And then all of a sudden they were in love. And I was just like, how are you in love with somebody that treated you that way? But yeah. it was always major angst. And it was just like every book I read, it was just like, somebody's crying, somebody's upset, something disastrous happened, you know, somebody died or, you know, something like that. So I think for a long time, that used to be, a big chunk of the formula and it still is today you know now we get more comedies and you know just straight up drama we have more mystery and all that stuff too but i still think that's a big chunk of the formula you know and it's just something we're used to if you've read it and it's up here so you're just like okay this is oh this this will be good if i do this it creates you know some tension you know and everything I think yeah. I think for me as well, it's I struggle to read anything that is just completely fluff and you know there's there's no tension, there's no drama because I, I, it just doesn't. I need something that's gonna hit me. Something with meat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't like that either. I have to have. I can't do the cutesy. I, no, I can't do it. I mean, you know, something to because otherwise there's. I just, I, need, I have to get to a point where I think, right, okay, I need to keep reading this. I need to know what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're just There's nothing like, going oh. on then. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's just, I have read cutesy before. And I think there's, obviously there's a market for it. Um, and I have to be in just a certain type of mood to even yeah. read something like yeah. that. I mean, and not roll my eyes. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm just... I mean, no offense to everybody. I mean, I, but you know, I, I usually like some stuff with some meat. I mean, you know, something else is going on, whether it's realism or a little bit of angst or a little bit of something that, that you can kind of think your fingers into and just no pun intended, everybody, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and kind of, you know, 
So, yeah. so yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, now I am a big, I'm a huge uh, Megan O'Brien fan, and her stuff is you would call it erotic romance. You know, um, you kind of skirt the line with this book. It's not erotica. It's it's not just because of the your word choices. You know, it makes it not, but it comes close. You know, uh, was that intentional? Did you pull back or, you know? To be honest, I could have put another 10, 20 sex scenes in it because mm. that's just the kind of person Mrs. Middleton is. Um, but for me, everything I write will, I, it usually has at least two sex scenes in it. Mm hmm and they never fade to black, you know, they're there, they're very much, you know, you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know, this book just felt I just felt like it needed more. And I wasn't really thinking about. I mean, I I, I may have thought once or twice, is this is this becoming more erotica than romance? But then I thought, well, no, because it's still got a lot of story behind it, you know, mm -hmm. if, if it was just sex scene after sex scene. Mm -hmm. That's, then, di that's yeah. different, yeah, yeah. And well, even- It's got so much story behind it and so much going on. I thought, yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And I think that's what makes it, that's what makes it keep that line right there. And the fact that you use, very much you use romance language in it, mm -hmm. yeah. as opposed to erotic language. Yeah. I mean, you know, so even, don't get me wrong. I mean, the love scenes still have, well, these sex scenes, it's from sex scenes to love scenes, um, you know, still have that uh, element in it, but you use romance language, you yeah. know, to describe them, which still creates that intensity, by the way. Kudos to you for being able to do that. You know, <laughs> not every writer, I've read, I've read a lot through the years, not in the past year and a half or so, but um, some writers do, you know, sex scenes, love scenes extremely well and some struggle, but they're great with the dialogue and creating attention, you know, and everything. You did really well with the, you know, so now is that, are they easy for you to write? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What I've, 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 what I've started to do is when it, when it comes to the point of maybe the first sex scene, I'll leave a note and then I'll go back and write it. Mm -hmm. But I have no problems writing sex scenes whatsoever. Thank you. None. I mean, the only time I struggle is if I'm trying to think of different words because I'm just like, I, and other than that, it just it just happens. I've I've just written one this morning, which took not very long. <laughs> it takes me days, days, because I don't know if it's a perfectionist thing. It's like I have pictures in my head of how I want it to go. Mm -hmm. And when I write it out, it has to be exactly how it took place in my head, you know? And so it, it you know, arms have to be here. I have to use the right words for, to create that intensity, you know, uh, sometimes if I'm gonna use humor in it, you know, I have to make sure it's in the right place and not making, you know? Yeah. So it's just like, oh, it takes a, a, a long time, you know, and variety is the spice of life, as, as they say, you know, so um, usually the books I've written have several uh, love scenes in them. So by the time I've gotten used to the characters, I have them all planned out in my head, all mm -hmm. of them. you know, so I know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, you know, uh, and all that stuff. But it takes me days, days, you know. I don't know why it's always been that way. I wrote fanfic too, as well. And mm -hmm. even when I was writing the scenes in fanfic, it was just like, oh, yeah, it's always been that way. What I, what I would, I, I, I won't recommend it, but what I did do once because I was really struggling, um, it was it was for the the call, which is the second book to the arrangement. And I knew what I wanted the scene to be, mm -hmm. but I just couldn't visualise it at all. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go online and watch some porn and make notes. 
Did it, did it work for you? Yeah. It really did. Or I've never done that. I don't. I don't think I can't recall. But no, I, I've never done that. It's just, it's just that's interesting though, because you know you can find whatever you want on the internet these days. Yeah. So, so yeah, and it's just like um, the current book that I'm kind of working on. Um, when I first came up with the uh, premise for it, um, you know, um, like I said earlier, I knew what kind of sex it was going to be. And you know, I knew how it was going to transition and everything. But um, it was actually a lot different from what I usually write because there's sex in the first chapter. I've never, I don't think I've ever done that before. Um, I'd read it. I would I, read it. <laughs> never done it. I, you know, I don't intentionally write slow burn, but what are you doing, Finn? Did you want to be on the camera? Okay. <laughs> Everybody. My cat's trying to uh, squeeze his way in here. Hello. Say hello to Finn, everybody. Say hello. Oh. OK, now get out of my hair. Get in my hair. OK. OK, so uh, but yeah, that's a new thing for me. Um, but it works for the characters. I mean, you know, and I think what you did uh, with your characters work for them as well. So I still hate you for them to be easy, you know, for that kind of thing to be easy for you to write. Well, that first scene in yeah. Mrs. Milton, the scene um, wasn't actually supposed to happen so soon. It did. Yeah. It to be did. honest, the entire book wasn't supposed to happen. Really? It, it just happened. I, I was napping on the couch one day and I woke up and I just, she falls in love with her best friend's mother. And everything else I was doing was just pushed to the side. And I just went to town on it. And this is what happened. How long did it take you to write it? Oh, um, six, seven weeks. Wow. So you really had that idea and ran with it. But I don't know where the idea came from. I don't, I don't remember. Were you dreaming about it? But I just woke up and it, it just, it was just there in my head. So. I thought, well, that that very rarely happens for me. I don't wake up in the night and make notes because I've had a dream or... Really? Yeah, so this was... I thought, no, I need to... Anyway, to my next question. Do you have, like, just a notebook full of ideas that you utilize and say, okay, I'm going to work on this? Or, and you just answer, you, it doesn't... Does it just come to you? I do have a notebook with ideas, mm -hmm. but I've yet to use any of them because something else just pops up or, you know, it's just, I, I, I don't really know because I was never supposed to be a writer either. So that just happened. I never wanted to be a writer. I never thought about being a writer. Um, it just happened. I know what you mean. It really, it, yeah. it, it all started in 2016. I lost my grandparents seven months apart and I started writing. And, and that's where how I've managed to be doing this now. It wasn't something, it was just fan fiction, just something to pass but the time. But you're saying too, I bet. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's surprising how cathartic, you know, sometimes it is, you know? Yeah. It, it really and truly is, wow. So are you, everybody, Finn is now eating my locks. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but he's chewing on one of the ends. And he's purring while he's doing it. Like it's the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put him down. So uh, uh, um, so are you like a ultra organized weird person that outlines? Oh, bless your heart. Bless I don't heart. outline anything. I, I, I mean, the basics, the name, the hair color. Uh -huh. That's about it's it really. Fiction. I do that too. Like I, I have a little character board. That's the only thing I kind of write down, you yeah. know, doing the last fourth of the book, I may do some notes here and there. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Miss Middleton was just, I knew that one character would be coming home from being away. Mm -hmm. And that she's already be in love with Mrs. Middleton. And that's all I knew. That was it. 
I had no idea where I was going with it. It just, I, I, to me, I think for me, Mrs. Middleton's one of those one of those books where you wish you could go back and write it again because you enjoyed writing it so much. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's the only that's the only one I've ever had where I've thought, oh, it's over now. Too bad. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I don't I don't I'm not very organized in, in any aspect of anything. Thank you. Where did you get the title from? I don't know. That just I just I I I got a notebook out and made a list of surnames. You know, so I had so so Emma's surname is Bradley, and it was actually potentially going to be Mrs. Bradley, and I thought, no, that doesn't work. No, Mrs. Middleton <laughs> just it has a ring to it. it has a sexy librarian or yes. school teacher thing, and she is a teacher. <laughs> it has that ring to it. It's perfect. <clears throat> so so yeah, I was just like, wow. And when I first um message did did I I think I tweeted you about the book mm -hmm. a friend of mine was asking me about it well do you know this author I said well yeah we're friends on Twitter I said we talk every once in a while you know we kind of shoot the shit here and there I said I kind of like it because she has a potty mouth you know and she doesn't you know mind expressing it and she was like oh my god ask her when her next book is coming out this is middle and I was like oh I said that one I was like oh okay and so you know I was just like let me ask her and she was just so excited to know that it was coming out April 1st she was like oh my god she was like I'm gonna put it on my calendar yeah and I know for a fact she just bought it like a couple of days ago well I hope she enjoys it yes de definitely so so yeah so but uh okay so how many books a year do you write usually well I've managed to do four a year so far. Wow. So. That's impressive. I mean, this because of COVID, I went through a phase of just wanting to sit on the couch and mm. watch TV and eat mm -hmm. and nothing else. And then at some point, it just all turned around and I've basically finished everything I'm writing this year. Wow. So I don't know how that happens either. It just all happens. It's, it's I don't know, because I'm actually, I'm already writing the first book of next year. Wow. So I've got three. I'm working on three at the minute. You, you're able to work on more than one book at the same time? Well, one one's basically finished. I'm just making edits because that's going to be edited tomorrow. Oh, wow. Oh okay. yeah, I'm working on my Christmas release and then the book after that, which will be Mrs. Middleton book two. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. oh, so, so I that's finish reading uh the first one then. Okay, I gotta go. I mean it doesn't it doesn't end there's no there's no cliffhanger, nothing like that. Okay. You know, I wouldn't do that to anyone. You, it, you know, it, it could have just ended the way it did, but they were still speaking to me, so I get it. So I you, get it. you okay? Do you write for a living? Yeah. How how what is that like? I would love to be able to do that someday. What is that like? It, at first, it was a bit of a novelty. Mm -hmm. So I just do what I wanted. I let I'll quit my job in September 2019, mm -hmm. and then obviously COVID happened. Mm -hmm. Not long after, so I, I, I've not really. It was sort of, oh, let's go out for the day. Oh, let's go and have lunch. Let's go and do this. Let's do anything other than write. Mm. And then once once COVID happens, it sort of helped me get into a bit of a routine because I'm terrible for routine. I will just do whatever, whenever. Sometimes I can still be sitting up at three o'clock in the morning finishing a chapter. Oh my god, it, my wife would kill me. It just depends. Well, my mind's about two, so. <laughs> But it's it's great, really. If it's what you want to do, which I never I never realised it was what I wanted to do. I mean, I've got a degree in sport development and I've never done anything with it. Yeah, that's uh, a huge departure from going. Yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. So 
and I, I, but back then, I never would have dreamed of writing a book or even fan fiction or anything like that because usually I wouldn't want anyone to see it. Mm-hmm. It makes it was stupid, you know. Mm-hmm. You know that. No, and I do still, I do still get the the inner critic every time a book is going live. Oh, that's no good. You know, no one's going to buy it. Every author goes through that. I'm sure Melissa Braden even feels it. I think one does. It's just yeah, it's customary. I mean, I, I think you know, I can't think of a book that by the time I've read over it for the fiftieth time and memorized certain lines that I'm thinking this is trash. People are going to think this is trash. I mean, you know, so, uh, and then you get their, those first couple of reviews and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's just Is happened. Or bad, yeah. The, last, the, the one that's due to go out in the summer, I was finishing it and I was thinking, this is nothing like Mrs. Middleton. Mrs. Middleton has broken me because I just, I was like, uh, it, it, it's nice, it's, you know, it's good, but it's not Mrs. Middleton. <laughs> Oh, no. speaking of which, are you an age gap romance person? Yeah. Why? What, what's the because, because I'm in a 24 year age gap. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that makes total sense then. Yeah. So sense. the bigger the age gap, the better. Oh. Like people, who, like, so Mrs. Middleton is 17 years. Mm-hmm. And most people, I, I don't like to make a big fuss of the age gap. Mm hmm. Because for me, it's never been an issue. And it's not an issue for some people. And, you know, I like age gap romances too. But a lot of times, it the age just seems to be always the issue. And I'm just like, why can't it not be? I mean, because yeah. I think for some people, that is just not. It's yeah, too- I mean, it, it's not something I ever think about. It, you know, I'm 32. My partner's 55. Mm-hmm. And we've been together nearly 40, 13 years. So mm-hmm. it's not she can be just as immature as I can oh, be yeah. mature. It's just, and um, it just, it works perfectly. So for me, when I write age gap, they will, you know, they will sort of talk about the age, especially in Miss Middleton, because that's the biggest age gap I've written. Mm-hmm. But it's sort of, they talk about it and then that, that then, and they realise there's other issues that are not related to the age gap. So, and and I, I think people just love age gap romances. I that I actively look for age gap romances when, and especially ones with angst in. Obviously, I love them. I, I I've read a lot of them. Um, uh, Super Cat is my favorite fandom in Supergirl because of the age gap. Yeah. Oh, it, you know. And don't get me wrong. I've read uh, some of the fanfic uh, in the past with Lena, mm-hmm. and Kara, and it's okay. But it doesn't. There's something about that whole dynamic for me. And so it's just like, oh, and it's like a, like a, like milk to a cat. I mean, you know, so I, I like it too. I'm not in a, uh, the woman I'm married to is a few months older than, well, almost a year older than me. I mean, you know, so there's not, and I don't think I've ever been in a relationship with somebody who was significantly over uh, older than me, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do. I enjoy reading it. Um, I enjoy um, uh, reading it uh, where it's a little different. Mm-hmm. Uh, like like you, like you said, not exploring so much because of the age gap. Because to me, that's rote at this point. I mean, you know, it's okay. Yes, we know that's what it is. But let's, there's so many other issues that just could be explored to make the book a little more different and a little more interesting. I mean, you know. So yeah, definitely, definitely. I think as well, what what I tend to do is rather than the younger one be uncertain, sometimes I'll I'll, I'll switch it round so that the old the older one in the relationship is feels just as vulnerable and mm-hmm. Why you not? know yeah. I, I don't want them to come across as like you know like like being a stalker or anything like that or or anything. Yeah. I mean, Mrs. Middleton could run after me any day she wants. That's fine by me. <laughs> a lot but, of readers think that, yeah. yeah. Well, I had one reader. Um, she was actually an ARC reader, and it was the first time she, she she's ARC read for me. And she sent me a picture. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I, I, can't, I can't believe this book. But she was sat there with a bloody tissue 
and a split lip. And I thought, what, what happened? So I was like, is everything okay? And she was like, yeah, I couldn't put the book down while I was reading it. And I walked into the coffee table and face planted mm. the fireplace and she split her lip. Oh my God. I just thought, oh no. So I had to say to people, please, please oh, just sit down when you're reading or, or, you know, put the book down and go and do what you need to do. I thought, oh no, I've injured someone. And then somebody else got in touch to say that they, they'd injured themselves. And I was thinking, what are you doing? Just I'm just waiting down. for, I was in a bathtub reading Mrs. Middleton. And I got electrocuted. <laughs> Because of you. Oh, but you, so yeah, so it, it's it's had very very mixed reviews. Mainly, mainly really good reviews. Um, mm. I was overwhelmed. But yeah, that 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 is. I had to, I actually sent her a signed paperback for that. Wow. I just thought, you know, it's the least I can do now that you're probably scarred for life. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, she did say it's left a scar as well, so I felt even worse. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's totally her fault. Yeah, it's well, her. I didn't tell her to walk around with the book. <laughs> okay, you said you had a book coming out soon. What is this book coming out? What is it about? It is book two in the Ashford series. So Playing for the Heart was the first one. Mm -hmm. This is going to be Holding Their Heart. And even though it's part of a series, it's completely can be read as a standalone. Um, mm -hmm. It's a toaster oven romance. Oh, okay. With an age gap. Oh, of course, of, of course. course. Uh, it's just, Ooh, it's but, okay, how is it a toaster oven? Is it a toaster oven for the older? The older, yeah. Ooh, see, I like that, I like so, that. So, he, so anyone that read the, the, read the first book, Eden, who was the main character, is in it, but only very briefly. Mm-hmm. So this is about her. She's 42 and she runs her own event planning company. Mm -hmm. And she hires a new photographer. Oh. So it's just, it, I mean, it's its not as angsty as Mrs. Middleton. That is the most, that that is like my, you know, that's my point of angst, mm -hmm. I think, because I think any more than that, I might kill someone, I don't know. Yeah, let me but, tell you, that scene... I hate to interrupt everybody, but that scene where uh, where she's left, she's left the house, and then she's camped out outside in her car, and Miss Middleton comes outside, and they like see each other, and she just drives away. Oh, so oh, yeah. Oh my God! I was like, why did you drive? You know, but it's just like, oh man, it's just oh, that that push and pull. You know, like I want to go. But what's important, to, what's important to me, you know, I could be hurting people. So, you know, I have to be selfless enough to be a, I mean, so it's just like, oh man, it was just like a, kind of like a knife to the heart type thing. You that, that chapter was actually in. added in. It was added in. So I think it was, I think it was when Vanessa comes down the driveway and stands in the middle of the road, mm -hmm. pushed over, that everyone was like, oh no, oh that's really sad and I was like well that, that's the point of it it's it's it a point was. Of it was because I could just imagine just the looks on on their faces or you know the longing and the the hesitancy you know I could, I could just imagine you know all the emotionality that would be in that moment and I could even hear like sad piano music as she's driving, <laughs> <laughs> she's driving away <laughs> I was just like oh man okay it was, I, I definitely, I did cry a few times when I was writing it. I mean, I, I'm not sure where you're up to, so. I, don't tell me. I'm up to, oh, where am I up to? Oh, oh, they've, they've decided to give a go. Mm -hmm. And she spent the night. Mm -hmm. That's, it was a little, it was the morning after. Mm -hmm. Well, the morning six after. Yeah. So I'm like right there. It's like right there. So, and I think, I don't even know if that's halfway or not. I, I don't even know where I am. I just know I just read it. Chapter 13, 12, 13, 13. Huh. Yeah, I, you, I, I, won't, I won't say anymore. Don't, don't, don't. Cause I, I, I just got the impression that things are just gonna go off the deep end, you know? So, so, uh, oh, 
I, I'm going to finish reading it eventually. And when <laughs> I do, you know, I'm going to send you a note on, I'm going to post it on Twitter. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, okay. Okay. And I hated to interrupt you about the book you that's coming out and uh, that you oh, have. Fun. So, uh, so why, when is that book coming out? The second that, that is due to come out in the summer. So maybe the end of June, early July. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, I, then I've got me, me Christmas release after that, and then that's me done for the year. Oh, is that all? I mean, my God. <laughs> well, the, this one that's going out next, I actually, I've actually rewritten that three times. Really? Yeah. So, I th I'm happy with where, where I, when I say rewritten it, I mean completely changed the storyline. Do, do, do I look like phased by that? I, I, you have nothing on me. My first novel, Blurt Lines, ask me how how many times I rewrote it. How many? It has to be at least five or six. And oh. I and I do mean complete rewrites. Yeah. But first, because it came from fanfic, it had to be a complete overhaul. Yeah. You know, and then the editor I had, Jove Bell, I'm talking about you. So if you're watching this, you know, celebrate the bitch that you are. Um, so, and she was just like, Good, but there's something let's go back and start at the beginning and then she would you know okay and I was a trooper about it I didn't get upset you know whatever I just wanted to be as good as it could be you know so and so I would finish that edition and she will say I think so-and-so needs her own her voice needs to be more distinctive so let's go back and okay by the time I finished the whole thing, I can still probably, if I were to really try, I could quote some lines from the book. That's how much I, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, six, at least six rewrites. May, maybe, yeah, at least six rewrites. That's not including the later editing that needed to be done, I mean, you know. Yeah, I think, I think at that point, I mean, I you I think I usually reread what wants to know it's you know it's where I want it to be because I don't I don't write it and then go back and edit I I'll write three or four chapters mm -hmm. go and edit them because then I don't want to get sixty k into it and think oh no and then you've got to change something every chapter mm -hmm. so I, I do I so I really when it comes to the, the you know the, the the full first draft it's. Mm -hmm three or four drafts in really mm. by the time you've gone back and gone back and gone back and yeah, you know I do, I do every five chapters I yeah. do you know once I get to chapter five then I'll go back and blah, blah, blah. I'll leave no, I may leave notes along the way but then you know I'll go back and add this or take this out or whatever and then I just move ahead but I don't at, at that point once I start chapter one I don't stop I just keep going, you know, and I have uh, beta read alpha readers, excuse me, you know, who uh, who I bring in as well. And I said, leave your notes, you know, or whatever, and I'll go back and incorporate, you know, what I think needs to be incorporated, you know, but we're moving on, you know, so, so, but, uh, but yeah, otherwise you'll be in that in the circle, mm -hmm. of, you know, in this editing, you know, where, okay, because even as you go through a book um, near the end where you're just doing, you know, just proofreading, you know, type stuff where the proofreader sent it back or whatever, there's a million things you could change, you know? So you can find yourself in that loop, you know, where you're just like, you can make this more intense or you can make that funnier or they need to say this, you know, so yeah. So yeah, I always think it's best to to just write it out and then then go back so you won't get caught up and you know, yeah, definitely. And sometimes you find when you do it like that, you know, you could write the first five chapters and then you might be getting ready to go on to the the sixth, whatever, and you might think, Oh, no, I need another chapter before that. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't quite work. Like with Mrs. Middleton, so the mm -hmm. chapter you said where she's sitting outside the house, mm -hmm. that chapter was added last minute mm. so yeah. really so really it goes from what it should have gone from was emma leaving that night mm -hmm. that night you know the night mm -hmm. going straight onto the coffee shop and i thought no that needs 
It needed a transition. It was a very good transition. Yes, very good. That was perfect. It was a very good transition. Excellent, excellent. Good, good. If I, if I didn't edit as a girl, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have done that. Ooh, see, see, there you go. There you go. Tricks of the trade, as they say. <laughs> now, at this time of the interview. I usually ask the authors to come up with an amusing story or something cringeworthy or something, a combination of both. Now I'm hoping by this time you've probably thought, you know, okay, I can tell this story. So you got something you want to tell everybody? Yeah. Um, <laughs> when we bought the house, we decided to rip out the kitchen uh -huh. and we had someone to come in, plan it, you know, and then it all got delivered, the units, everything. And I was really excited taking the boxes away. And I said to Lee, my partner, I said, they've sent the wrong kitchen. So what, what, I have they sent the wrong kitchen. I said, they've sent the wrong kitchen. I asked for like a, a, a gray and a white high gloss. There's only gray and then baby blue. She mm -hmm. was like, baby blue. So I phoned, phoned the company. I said, you've sent me the wrong kitchen. No, no, we haven't, we haven't. We've got it here, you know, granny or what, graphite, whatever the colour was, and white. And I said, well, you've not sent me white, you've sent me baby blue. And then I heard Lee shout me. She said, um, are you still on the phone? I said, yeah. She said, um, you might want to apologise to the lady on the phone because you've not took the backing off, the protective backing <laughs> off, the, off the white units. So so I said, so I, I said to the, to the lovely lady on the phone, I said, oh, I said, I'm really sorry. It's, oh, my part it's my partner's fault. She hasn't taken the protective back enough. Oh, that's and I just thought, why? Did, but I, I didn't think to check. I thought, well, because the grey didn't have blue seal on it. So why did the white? And I was thinking, who orders a baby blue kitchen? Why, why is that in stock? And it wasn't. That's an odd combination. I'm trying to visualize. I was like, ew. I, all, all I remember was being stuck in the back room with all this kitchen around me and ovens, and I couldn't, I couldn't move for, for the amount of boxes. And I'm, but I was really angry. I was like, no, because it's getting fitted tomorrow, and I need the right kitchen. It, oh, it, it was the right kitchen all along, but obviously, Lee got the blame for it, not me. Uh, uh, yeah, obviously. Because yeah. I was on the phone and I thought, I'm not saying, oh, I'm really sorry, but I made, <laughs> I made the mistake. No, of course not. Of course not. Blame um, somebody else. When, when in doubt, blame, blame the partner. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I do that too. And my <laughs> yeah, wife, yeah, my wife is hip to it, and she goes like, she, <laughs> she goes like, bitch, you're not blaming me. <laughs> I tried. I tried to uh, do that just the other day. As a matter of fact, I was at my office. Um, yeah, I was at my office and, uh, one of my fr um, friends would, you know, he was like, uh, Hey, why don't you come over, you know, this coming weekend? And at first I was like, well, Michelle's not, you know, at a 14 days till Monday. And he was like, Oh, we'll be outside. You know, it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I was like, I'll ask her, you know, that, that was my response. I'll ask her. So I texted her. And I was like, you know, uh, so and so, you know, wants us to come over on Saturday and uh, or the weekend. And she goes like, she was like, but my fourteen days is not till Monday, you know. And then she was like, well, you know, she was like, whatever. And I was like, well, I really didn't feel like going, and I figured you were gonna say no. <laughs> I was like, she go, and I said, I could just say you went fish, you were going fishing or something. She's like, bitch, no, you won't. You don't, you're not blaming me. She's, you know, we're going, you're not blaming me. And I was like, I'm fine. We're not going to come up with any kind of excuse. She says, no, because you're going to try to blame me. And I was like, fine. I said, we'll go. Fine. <laughs> you know. And did you go? We're going today. Is it better? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, so yeah, when in doubt, blame the spouse. Yeah. Ooh, I made a little rhyme there, everybody. <laughs> okay, thank you for joining me. It's been fun. I appreciate it. I've really enjoyed it. See, see? Except, except the, the hot sauce. I could have yeah. left that completely. Yeah. We'll see, but after a few minutes, once you started talking, it didn't even bother you anymore, did it? I might use it one day on some chicken. See? Don't forget to refrigerate it. Yes. Yeah. Refrigerate it. Okay, mm -hmm. well, 
again, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, and this has been another episode of Girl on Fire, everybody. So I'll see you next time. Obviously, I'm going to have another guest. I don't know who it's going to be because I don't keep track anymore. Something's wrong with me, I know. But until next time, thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.